I Damn. thought I saw something about Canelo's doing an event there. Is that true? It's the same Canelo night. is doing a fight the same night. At, at the Sphere? No. no. Oh, <laughs> that would Canelo. be interesting. <laughs> um, the uh, No, at T-Mobile. They're going T-Mobile the same time we are. Why do you say that with a maniacal laughter behind you? God, are they going to go at the Sphere the same time we are? They're just f***ing with you. No, I don't have problem with that. Uh, I'm good. I'm um, just doing my thing, and I don't have problem with Dana, and I don't have problem with the UFC. Uh, I think we're going to... Uh, we both want to have to sell in uh, September 14th. UFC President Dana White has shared his thoughts on Canelo Alvarez's decision to fight on Mexican Independence Day, September 14th, in Las Vegas. This date coincides with the highly anticipated UFC 306 event at the Sphere, featuring Sean O'Malley versus Marab Dvalishvili and the trilogy fight between Alexa Grasso and Valentina Shevchenko. During the post-UFC 304 press conference, White acknowledged that it made sense for Canelo to choose such a significant date for Mexicans. To be honest, I didn't know what they were going to do, White said, but it's Mexican Independence Day, so you have to assume there were probably going to be other Mexicans fighting that night besides ours. Like I said yesterday, it is what it is. Here we go. We'll see how it plays out. Despite his calm demeanor during the conference, White had previously expressed frustration, suggesting that the date was snatched by Canelo's representative, Al Heyman. However, White emphasized his respect for the Mexican boxer and his agency, assuring there are no hard feelings. White mentioned, Canelo is one of those guys I respect, and well, good for Heyman. These comments from Dana White highlight the underlying tension between the worlds of boxing and MMA, especially when major events collide on the same weekend. While White's respect for Canelo is evident, his acknowledgement of Al Heyman's strategic move underscores the competitive nature of the fight business. White added, Heyman snatched the date from me right away. Canelo Alvarez is undoubtedly one of the biggest combat sports athletes in the world. The fighter has constantly given blockbuster pay-per-view events in his previous fights. Alvarez plans to do the same with his upcoming boxing match with Edgar Berlanga on September 14th. The fight date clashes with Dana White's dream project in the Las Vegas sphere, but that doesn't seem to concern the multi-divisional champion. With only one month remaining in the fight, Canelo Alvarez has been pretty busy with the promotions for his fight. In an interview, Alvarez was recently asked about his head-on clash with Noche UFC on September 14th. While many are speculating UFC to dominate the numbers, Alvarez is quite confident in his ability to sell tickets. I don't care if he's the UFC there. It's when Canelo fights, he's different. I like how you're talking about yourself in third person, like, yeah. well, Canelo do something. <laughs> <laughs> With a calm but assertive tone, Alvarez emphasized his unique standing in the sport, saying, it's just different. He elaborated, maybe other boxing matches, maybe, but Canelo is different. There are other kinds of fights, but Canelo is just different. I don't care if the UFC is there. When Canelo fights, it's different. Alvarez's words reflect his belief in his star power and the impact he has on the boxing world, especially during such a significant weekend for his Mexican fan base. One knock against Alvarez's upcoming matchup is that Berlanga lacks the notoriety of some of Alvarez's other challenger options, namely WBC interim champion David Benavidez. Saudi promoter Turki Alalshik also accused Alvarez of intentionally pricing himself out of negotiations for a superfight with Terence Crawford, to which Alvarez simply responded with a laughing emoji. Alvarez explained why he feels justified in defending against Berlanga despite calls to take on other opponents. Canelo stated, look, at some point all the fighters did what they were told. Alvarez's comments shed light on his mindset as he prepares to face Edgar Berlanga, despite some critics calling for him to take on different opponents. Canelo draws parallels to the careers of boxing legends like Oscar De La Hoya, Floyd Mayweather, Julio Cesar Chavez, and Mike Tyson, noting that they all navigated their careers in a way that suited them best. He said, Oscar De La Hoya, Floyd Mayweather, Julio Cesar Chavez, Mike Tyson, everybody did this. There are stars and superstars, and they made the championship, not the championship championship made them. So it's way different. I come and I do my career and I fight with Miguel Cotto with a clause. And I fight with Mayweather with a clause. And I fight with everybody to build the Canelo Alvarez I am. Right now, I can do whatever I want, he asserts, signaling his belief that he's reached a point where he's in control, just like the greats before him. This sense of autonomy, Alvarez suggests, is part of what defines a true superstar in the sport. The IBF says, hey, you need to fight with this because this. Who's William Skull? I never hear about him. Just when they say, this is your mandatory. I never hear about him. I don't want to do whatever they want. I want to do what I want. In this position, I can do whatever I want because I deserve it because of all I did. They said, you don't want to fight Genady Golovkin. I fight him. Eris Landi Lara. I fight him. Callum Smith, Billy Joe Saunders, Caleb Plant, Austin Trout, Mayweather, Cotto, Dimitri Bivol, everything. 
I did everything, and now, Berlanga. But like I said, I did everything, and now I can ask whatever I want, and I can do whatever I want. Canelo Alvarez's statement reflects his firm stance on his career choices, particularly in response to the IBF's mandate to fight William Skull, a name he admits he's barely heard of until it was brought up as a mandatory challenge. Alvarez's frustration with the governing bodies is clear. He's not interested in being dictated to after all he's accomplished in the sport. Dana White has been working on the UFC at the Las Vegas card for a long time. According to the UFC CEO, his dream project will be his love letter to Mexican fight fans. However, with MGM giving Canelo Alvarez the T-Mobile Arena on the same date, White felt disrespected. However, the Saudi delegate and a friend of White, Turkey Alalshik, sided with the UFC to destroy Alvarez in revenge for not accepting his offer. And then we will have a good big fight. I don't understand. Give you it over, and we give you good fight. You don't want it. Okay, give it in your way. You see it a lot of interest in all for Korea, and he does not respond with what he thinks is good for God. And this is his right. But what is bothered, he starts to think and to say, he is fake. Nonetheless, it will be Canelo Alvarez's second title defense of 2024. In his last outing, the Mexican powerhouse beat Chaimi Munguia via unanimous decision. However, one of the biggest fights that fans are expecting from the fighter is a potential clash with Terence Crawford. Terence Crawford recently made history by capturing the WBA junior middleweight title by outpointing Israel Madrimov. This made Bud the only four-division title holder in recent times. This win also solidified his pound-for-pound -pound ranking as one of the top fighters in the world. What's left is the dream bout with none other than Canelo Alvarez. After Crawford's win, Turkey Alalshik announced that he was considering holding the fight. However, he backed out of the project due to collaborative differences with Alvarez. While discussing the fight, Alvarez mentioned that he's down if the money is right. He said, everybody wants to fight me, everybody calling me out and everything. I have nothing to win with Crawford. Two, three weight classes less than me. But if the money is right, why not? Nevertheless, this clash between Alvarez and the UFC has everyone's eyes on it. The UFC fight card is stacked from top to bottom, with Sean O'Malley defending his belt in the main event. Both Dana White and Alvarez are confident about their respective shows, and it will be interesting to see how this turns out on September 14th. With Alvarez's track record and Berlanga's rising star power, predictions for this showdown are already sparking debate. While some question Berlanga's readiness for such a high-stakes bout, others see it as a potential career-defining moment for the young fighter. With September 14th fast approaching, the clash between these two will undoubtedly be a focal point in the world of boxing. Jesse Bomb Rodriguez recently weighed in on the upcoming clash between Canelo Alvarez and Edgar Berlanga. When asked for his thoughts, Rodriguez shared his prediction with confidence. I think Canelo wins. I think it's too early for Berlanga right now, he stated, acknowledging the significant experience gap between the two fighters. However, Rodriguez also recognized Berlanga's potential to make the fight exciting, adding, but I think for as long as the fight lasts, it'll be entertaining. Jose Benavidez Sr., a respected figure in the boxing community, shared his thoughts on Edgar Berlanga's upcoming fight with Canelo Alvarez. Despite some speculation about animosity between him and Canelo, Benavidez Sr. was quick to clarify his stance. He began, expressing admiration for Berlanga's achievement. First of all, you know I want to congratulate Berlanga for landing this big fight with Canelo. Everybody wants to fight Canelo. When asked if he was upset about Berlanga getting the fight, Benavidez Sr. responded, No, no. At the end of the day, everybody's trying. This is what we're all trying to do. Benavidez Sr. continued, emphasizing the significance of the opportunity Berlanga has. He noted, He landed a big fight. Congratulate him for that. It's not easy. He was the chosen one. Despite acknowledging Berlanga's power and potential, Benavidez Sr. remained realistic about the challenge ahead. He added, I hope that he could beat Canelo and knock him out. But at the end of the day, Canelo is Canelo, man. He's a great fighter. He's done a lot for boxing. Benavidez Sr. believes that while Berlanga might give a good account of himself, Canelo's experience and skill make him a formidable opponent, underscoring the uphill battle Berlanga faces in this fight. He suggested that Alvarez's confidence might stem from a strategic understanding of Berlanga's style. He also added, I think he believes that he could beat Berlanga, you know, because of the style and all. Jose Benavidez Sr. didn't shy away from expressing his concerns about the excitement level surrounding the Canelo Alvarez versus Edgar Berlanga fight. He candidly pointed out that the matchup might not generate the buzz that other high-profile bouts would. It's a great fight. I think it's going to be a good fight, and uh, I don't know if people want to watch that fight, to be honest with you. I don't want to watch it. You know, if I have other things to do, I'd rather do other, I'll catch it on the replay or whatever, you know, but it's not like I'm going to leave what I'm doing to, to watch that fight. You know, it's not exciting. It's not, 
you know, what people want to see. This skepticism adds another layer of intrigue, as it raises questions about whether the fight will live up to expectations or if it could struggle to capture the audience's interest, with the varying opinions and predictions about the Canelo Alvarez versus Edgar Berlanga fight. One thing is clear, both fighters are leaving no stone unturned in their preparations. <laughs> This side-by-side -side footage will give us a glimpse into their intense preparations and the dedication each fighter is bringing to the ring. In an effort to build excitement for his upcoming fight with Canelo Alvarez, Edgar Berlanga highlighted the historic significance of the matchup. I think, you know, it's something for the history books. Mexico versus Puerto Rico has always been the greatest rivalry in boxing. Berlanga believed that this fight is not just another bout, but a significant event that taps into the rich history of the boxing rivalry between Mexico and Puerto Rico. By framing the fight as a historical clash, Berlanga aims to amplify its importance and generate additional hype among fans. In response to critics who argue that it's too early for him to face a seasoned champion like Canelo Alvarez, Edgar Berlanga made a strong defense of his readiness. People that are saying it's too early, Edgar, you shouldn't have took this fight. What do you got to say to that? I've been boxing since I was seven, bro. I've been, I was born into this. Berlanga's response emphasizes his long-standing commitment to the sport and his deep-rooted experience. He aims to counter any doubts about his preparedness for such a high-profile fight by highlighting his extensive background in boxing from a young age. Berlanga's confidence reflects his belief that his years of training and dedication have fully equipped him for the challenge ahead, despite the high stakes of fighting Alvarez. Adding to his defense, Edgar Berlanga further expressed his determination and excitement about the opportunity. Berlanga said, I'm not, we're not stepping back. He also stated, we got the opportunity and we're taking it. You feel me? And we're going up against a legend, so that's the most important thing. He continued, reflecting on the magnitude of the moment. It's crazy. I really dreamed about all of this man. Like everything that's going on right now, I dreamed of it. Berlanga's remarks reveal his unwavering resolve and the significance he places on this fight with Canelo Alvarez. His words convey a sense of destiny and fulfillment, highlighting that facing a legendary fighter like Alvarez is not just an opportunity, but a realization of his long-held aspirations. Another prominent voice in the boxing world, Terence Crawford, has weighed in with his prediction. We got a fight. Yeah. Why would I be thinking about him? What do you think of the Berlanga fight? I think he stops about me. It becomes clear that the expectations for this matchup are as varied as the opinions surrounding it. Eddie Hearn recently shared his thoughts on Canelo Alvarez's decision to face Edgar Berlanga, positioning it as a strategic move. He stated, I think he's the biggest fight available for Canelo Alvarez outside of David Benavidez. He further elaborated, so, you know, his other mandatory was William Skull. I believe this was the right fight for him. Hearn's comments underscore his belief that Berlanga represents a significant and compelling challenge for Alvarez making the bout a more attractive option than other contenders like William Skull. By highlighting Berlanga's potential to generate excitement and interest, Hearn emphasizes that this fight is a strategic choice and a well-timed opportunity for both fighters to showcase their skills on a grand stage. Gabe Rosado recently weighed in on the matchup between Canelo Alvarez and Edgar Berlanga, offering a critical perspective. Rosado remarked, Who wants to see Berlanga fight Canelo? Who actually thinks Berlanga could beat Canelo? Nobody. His skepticism reflects a broader concern that the fight might not generate significant excitement or pay-per-view sales, given the disparity in experience and achievements between the two fighters. Rosado continued, They want to sell the Puerto Rico versus Mexico angle, but the only way you sell that is when the Puerto Rican and the Mexican guy are equally in the same bracket. He further elaborated, But Canelo is a future Hall of Famer, and Berlanga hasn't even fought, hasn't even beat a world champion yet. Rosado's comments highlight the challenge of marketing the fight as a historic rivalry when one fighter has yet to reach the same level of accomplishment as the other. His perspective underscores the difficulties in making this matchup feel equally compelling from a competitive standpoint. Jason Quigley, who has faced Edgar Berlanga in the ring, shared his thoughts on the upcoming fight between Berlanga and Canelo Alvarez. Quigley said, I'm very interested to see the fight, to be honest. Quigley also added, Obviously, styles make fights, but I think it'll be a good gauge for me as well to see how the fight goes. Quigley's insight is particularly relevant given his first-hand experience with Berlanga. He reflected on their past encounter, noting, take the knockdowns away, you know, I won a lot of those rounds. Even the rounds that there were knockdowns, I believe that I won those rounds only for the knockdown. I really wish Berlanga all the best, and if Berlanga wins, I'm hitting the gym big time and I'm coming back 100%. <laughs> His perspective suggests that Berlanga's performance in this high-profile fight will be a significant point of reference for him.
Quigley's keen interest underscores the match's importance for evaluating both fighters and gauging Berlanga's readiness to compete at this elite level. Meanwhile, senior boxing analyst Teddy Atlas, who has decades of experience in the sport, echoed Benavidez's sentiments, stating, This matchup feels like a mismatch. Berlanga has potential, but Canelo is on a different level right now. Atlas pointed out that Canelo's exceptional skills and ring IQ would likely overwhelm Berlanga, making the fight a one-sided affair. So fans have expressed their disappointment with the canelo Berlanga matchup, with many believing that Canelo should be facing more challenging opponents. They argue that Berlanga, despite his impressive knockout ratio, has not faced the same level of competition as Canelo and is not ready for such a high-profile fight. David Benavidez, a rising star in the super middleweight division, has vehemently criticized the upcoming Canelo Alvarez versus Edgar Berlanga fight, labeling it as a joke fight. Benavidez, known for his aggressive style and impressive knockout power, believes that this matchup is unworthy of Canelo's legacy and that fans deserve to see the Mexican superstar face top-tier opponents. Teddy Atlas believes that while Berlanga has some potential as a boxer, Canelo Alvarez is currently at a much higher level regarding skill, experience, and performance. Atlas feels that Berlanga may not be able to match Canelo's abilities, making the fight seem uneven or unfair. Meanwhile, David Benavidez openly insults Canelo Alvarez in front of the media and says, He choosing Edgar Berlanga over true competitors like myself shows he's more interested in easy paydays than proving he's the best in the division. Benavidez also warns Canelo that this fight is not good for his career, as he is avoiding difficult fights to protect his record and reputation, rather than proving he is the best in the division. Furthermore, Timothy Bradley, the former champion and commentator, stated, People want to see Canelo tested against top-tier opponents. Berlanga is still climbing the ranks, and this fight just doesn't make sense from a competitive standpoint. Timothy Bradley, a former world champion and respected boxing commentator, shared his thoughts on the potential matchup between Canelo Alvarez and Edgar Berlanga. Bradley believes that while Berlanga is a rising star with impressive knockout power, the fight does not make sense from a competitive standpoint. Bradley explained that Canelo has proven himself against some of the best fighters in the world, including Gennady Golovkin, Miguel Cotto, and Floyd Mayweather Jr. He argued that Berlanga, with only 17 professional fights, has not yet faced the same level of competition as Canelo. Bradley pointed out that Berlanga's victories have mostly come against lower-ranked opponents, and he has not shown the same level of skill and experience as Canelo. According to Bradley, a fight between Canelo and Berlanga would be a mismatch, and it would not provide Canelo with the challenge he needs to continue his legacy. He suggested that Canelo should instead focus on facing other top middleweights, such as Jermal Charlo, Demetrius Andrade, or Gennady Golovkin, in a trilogy bout. These matchups, Bradley believes, would provide Canelo with the competitive test he needs to prove his greatness and further cement his status as one of the best fighters of his generation. Bradley said, Trash a fight. Nobody wants to see that. But at the end of the day, Canelo doesn't face the strongest opposition. It is what it is. Canelo Alvarez, the super middleweight champion, announced his title defense on Mexican Independence Day against Edgar Berlanga in Las Vegas. Canelo traditionally fights around Mexican holidays like Cinco de Mayo and Mexican Revolution Day. Berlanga, an undefeated rising star, poses a challenge to Canelo. Fans anticipate the clash of these skilled fighters. Canelo's dedication to Mexican heritage through boxing has gained him fans worldwide. Whoever he's working with at the time, he says he's the best promoter in the world. Because we didn't have the opponents for him. The only fight we had for him was Dimitri Bivol, which we couldn't make because Bivol had a, had a fight to do and then he was fighting better Biv. So we couldn't get that fight made. Bivol wanted to do it at 168. Canelo wanted it at the same terms. So he had no choice but to join the PBC because they gave him a good path. But the path eroded. The path that was, that was mapped out never actually materialised. And he doesn't want to fight a guy. He was disappointed with a Charlo fight. Eddie is quite shocked by this reaction. However, Canelo Alvarez gives Eddie Hearn bad news about their relationship. Eddie clearly mentioned that Canelo has no choice other than joining PBC. He looks very disappointed. Eddie believes that this fight can be described as respectable, like driving by a car crash on the freeway. He said, you can't help but look. Berlanga isn't the opponent that fans wanted from Canelo, but they're stuck with this. Canelo has picked Berlanga over Chris Eubank Jr. as his challenger. Alvarez wouldn't risk his hide fighting David Benavidez or David Morrell and lose his three titles. But one person in particular was extremely disappointed and kind of fed up with the situation. This is middleweight elite boxer David Benavidez, who has been Canelo's WBC mandatory fight for the last three years. 
years, but has been actively avoided by the Mexican champion. While Eddie Hearns believes that Berlanga is viewed as a weak, unworthy challenger with a laughable resume, he does bring a brawling style that will make the fight with Canelo entertaining for as long as the contest lasts. Berlanga is a primitive throwback fighter like James Kirkland, who comes out slugging with minimal skills and is there to be hit. You know, I don't want to overstep quickly and, and, and just think about Canelo because the 24th, I have opposition that I got to destroy, you know? So my main focus right now is quickly. I know the Canelo fight is on the verge to make it ha to, to, to come in true. You know, it's there already, you know? But like I said, if I don't perform, if I don't make a statement, if I don't... The new improved Edgar Belanga, you know, I feel like and not, nothing will happen unless I, I, I perform on, on the 24th. Edgar Berlanga says the Canelo clash is on the verge. Many analysts believe that if Berlanga had been matched against tough opposition by his past promoters at top rank and current ones at matchroom, he would have been weeded out long ago. He wouldn't be getting this title shot against Canelo. Andre Ward, the former champion, believes that at the moment, it appears Alvarez is only taking safe bets to fight against and continue his dominance in the division. While Canelo Alvarez said, I've been his mandatory for the past three years. I can't force a man to fight me. It shouldn't even come to a position where you have to activate your mandatory. What is the interim title for? That's basically activating your mandatory. They got a lot of weird stuff going on over there. At the end of the day, I gotta move forward with my career. According to PBC official, it does get a little exhausting trying to get the fight everybody wants, and Canelo is just avoiding it by throwing numbers people can't take him seriously for. The World Boxing Council is currently run by President Mauricio Suleiman, and they are the ones not enforcing the mandatory fight between Canelo and Benavidez. Meanwhile, Andre Ward also points to Edgar's performance against Canelo. He stated, Canelo Canelo versus Berlanga might sell tickets, but it's not the fight that'll cement legacies. Fans want to see Canelo in with guys like Benavidez, who's been calling him out and is at the top of his game. Ward also acknowledges that Canelo versus Berlanga could be a commercially successful event, drawing in large audiences due to the star power of both fighters. However, he contrasts this commercial appeal with the importance of legacy in boxing. Legacy is built on facing and overcoming the toughest challenges, something that fans and historians look back on with respect. Because that's just that effort. So what we do is we sign who we want to sign, the people who have the commercial value, not just guys because they've got a good name. Some of these guys, PBC have lost a lot of money on doing fights with those fighters. So you have to, the price has to be right, the business has to be right. But people like Benavidez, if we, you know, if we, may, if we do manage to do a deal with Canelo Alvarez, we can do Munguia, we can do Belanga, or if Benavidez wants to come and play, but it doesn't, we don't, when PBC do a deal, they only let you go and fight one of their fighters if you align yourself to PBC. By disapproving of this fight, Eddie Hearns clearly says Canelo Alvarez and the choice of his opponents this year, needless to say, have been rather puzzling for the fans. His loyal fan base would have preferred to witness him going toe-to-toe -to -toe with heavy-handed David Benavidez. But first, they got a Cinco de Mayo fight in Jaime Munguia. And now, for their annual Mexican Independence Day treat, they have Edgar Berlanga. Is this a fight that will move the needle? The verdict is still out on it. But for Mexican monster. It's a fight that no one wants to see. Meanwhile, Canelo Alvarez is reportedly being stripped of one super middleweight crown as he prepares to defend his three others against Edgar Berlanga on September 14th in Las Vegas, while his competitor David Benavidez said, Canelo fighting Berlanga is a joke. Berlanga has potential, but he hasn't proven himself against top competition. It's a money fight, not a legacy fight. Fans want to see Canelo against real contenders. But Benavidez, who had been Alvarez's mandatory for over two years, ended his disappointing chase with the Mexican champion as he decided to stay put at 175 and challenge for the gold. He had been devoid of the same at 168 because Alvarez, 34, never ceded to the fans' demand. What's up, guys? Clap back Thursdays. Lots of rumors that Jaime Munguia is going to top rank. Wrong. He's still with Golden Boy, but just fighting on ESPN for his next fight. Just a different network. The September 14th fight has been made. Canelo Alvarez, Edgar Berlanga. A fight that nobody asked for. Fans are now starting to boycott Canelo for continuing to duck you-know-who. Also, they're going up against the UFC at the Sphere. Ooh, good luck with making a splash with that one. Jake Paul, he won his last fight over the weekend. Jake, I've told you before that if you want to legitimize yourself in the sport of boxing, you have to take a different path. I have the perfect opponent for you to gain the real respect of the boxing community. What you're doing right now is regressing skill-wise. It's not making you a better fighter. 
Just call me. Scared of Benavidez, promoter and former professional boxer, Oscar De La Hoya rejects Canelo Alvarez to be on top rank. Oscar De La Hoya brutally reacts to the Canelo versus Berlanga fight. Oscar De La states, Berlanga is a good fighter with a bright future, but I don't think he's ready for Canelo. Canelo needs to face opponents who can push him to his limits, and right now, that's not Berlanga. However, David Benavidez, a prominent figure in the super middleweight division, has openly criticized the potential matchup between Canelo Alvarez and Edgar Berlanga. He also has expressed his disappointment, viewing this fight as less challenging and unworthy of Alvarez's caliber. Furthermore, Canelo cares about nobody, and promoters are saying that let Canelo make more money while he believes that it's exciting to be part of another great Mexico versus Puerto Rico battle inside the ring because historically we have always offered unforgettable fights full of passion. I am proud to contribute to this legacy, and facing an opponent like Edgar Berlanga adds even more excitement and meaning to this event. But on the opposite side, Oscar Della believes no no one asked for the Canelo versus Berlanga fight in reality, and the boxing world is largely disgusted with it. It is bad form by Canelo to fight Berlanga next up. Last year, UFC pounced on the holiday before Alvarez could secure the date and delivered Noche UFC, a fight night card. The UFC has a very different audience, so both events will probably find plenty of success. And with Alvarez's legion of passionate fans from Mexico, it is also assured he will bring fans in drove to his event, though it figures to be a key storyline all week in Las Vegas. And it is once again being presented as Noche UFC. UFC. Moreover, boxing commentator and analyst Pauli Malignaghi highlights the disparity in skill and experience between Canelo Alvarez and Edgar Berlanga. He believes, I understand the appeal from a promotional standpoint, but from a boxing purist's perspective, this fight doesn't make sense. Berlanga needs more time and more wins against top opposition before he steps in with Canelo. He also suggests that while Berlanga has potential and is on the rise, he is not yet at the level where he can genuinely challenge a seasoned and highly skilled fighter like Canelo. This this perceived mismatch in levels makes the fight less intriguing from a competitive standpoint. In addition, American TV personality and promoter Max Kellerman also supports Pauli Malignaghi's statement and added, This fight feels more like a business decision than a sporting one. Canelo has nothing to prove against Berlanga, and fans know it. They want to see Canelo in with someone who's truly earned the shot. Kellerman is suggesting that the fight between Canelo Alvarez and Edgar Berlanga seems driven by financial motives rather than competitive merit. He feels that Canelo's reputation and skill level Level mean he should be facing opponents who have proven themselves as worthy challengers, rather than someone who hasn't yet faced top-tier competition. Benavidez is now next in line to face the winner of Artur Beterbiev versus Dmitry Bivol, where all the straps of 175 will be on the line. He might have to wait for a while as Beterbiev versus Bivol has a rematch clause, so you can expect Benavidez to finally realize his ambition of fighting for the undisputed crown somewhere in the first quarter of 2025. David Benavidez violates Canelo and Berlin. Berlanga. Nobody trying to see that. Timothy Bradley stated, People want to see Canelo tested against top-tier opponents. Berlanga is still climbing the ranks, and this fight just doesn't make sense from a competitive standpoint. Timothy Bradley is saying that boxing fans want to see Canelo Alvarez face high-level, experienced opponents. He believes that Edgar Berlanga is still not at that top level, and that a fight between him and Canelo lacks competitiveness because Berlanga is not yet a proven contender. September 14, you know. Los duros, oíste, los boris, activos siempre, tocados. Matarlo, oíste. Los Puerto Rico, mi familia, todo, oíste. A matar, guerra, puñeta. Edgar Berlanga tells Canelo Alvarez he's going to knock him out on September 14th when they rumble at the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas when they meet for their heated rivalry Mexico versus Puerto Rico. Edgar Berlanga goes off on Canelo Benavides, feels that Canelo is avoiding more challenging opponents and settling for a less competitive match to boost his earnings rather than proving himself as the best in the division. You no, know, I, don't, I don't mind the fight either, you know, but, uh, but it's not something that I was really excited about. It's not a fight that, that I was really excited about. I know the, the casual... For, just boxing fans that love to watch boxing, they're going to love it because Puerto Rico versus Mexico. Uh, people love to see uh, Jake Paul fight, you know, and, and, and he generates a lot. So it's so pretty much the same thing. I would have preferred Canelo fighting a different name, but... As the anticipation builds for Canelo Alvarez's showdown with Edgar Berlanga on September 14th, the Clash of Titans promises to captivate boxing fans worldwide. With Canelo's legacy on the line and Berlanga aiming to etch his name into boxing history, 
this fight embodies a dramatic collision of experience versus youthful ambition. Canelo Alvarez's confidence and historical perspective shine through as he prepares for a bout that is not just about titles, but about leaving a lasting impact on the sport. Meanwhile, Berlanga's fervent dedication and determination underscore his readiness to seize this monumental opportunity, defying the doubts and aiming to prove his mettle on one of the biggest stages in boxing. As both fighters ramp up their training, with side-by-side -side footage highlighting their intense preparations, the stage is set for a memorable encounter. The fight against the backdrop of UFC 306 adds another layer of excitement, showcasing how this crossover date has ignited conversations and rivalries beyond just the boxing ring. What are your thoughts on the Canelo Alvarez versus Edgar Berlanga fight? Do you think Berlanga has what it takes to challenge Canelo? Or is this a case of experience overshadowing youth? Share your predictions and thoughts in the comments below.